It was very interesting. Um, she was always very generous to me. I thought she had a little problem with me. We had one incident where Benson was going to be seen outside of that household for the first time. And uh, the reality of what those characters meant to one another had never really been discussed was because we were, you know, so farcical. But to me, I retained a, I, I went for a realistic relationship. In other words, in the final analysis, he does get paid for this job, and he's not doing it just out of the goodness of his heart or because he's so in love with white people, or you can hire somebody and you don't have to pay them. So I was going for the reality of, yeah, well, he does make a living out of this. And, uh, and I was also going for the reality that a black person would do things differently than white people. In other words, I would wear clothes. I might spend more money on clothes. So when Benson was to be seen outside the house on one occasion, he had, uh, Jessica had put, been put in jail for the murder of Peter, and so he brought Jessica some food in jail. Well, they had a suit for me to wear. And it was really like a little dumb suit in my mind. It might not have meant anything else to anyone else. But to me, it just it was like, I can't wear a suit like this. I wouldn't wear a suit like this. I didn't invoke much of that. I, he wouldn't do this, he wouldn't do that. I didn't invoke much of that because I didn't have to because Susan was writing so well for the character, even though skimpy, even though what she was writing, I always felt in my actor's head, my ego, that I wasn't being serviced, certainly not enough. I mean, why did these people have any lines, <laughs> you know? So... Uh, but I had to wear this suit, and this suit had the pants would hike up in front, and you know your ankles were exposed and whatnot, and it was gray, and they had a little vent in the back of the coat that was about like that, and the coat came above your buttocks, and it was just a dumb-looking suit that I said, you know, I said I can't wear this, and so the Costumer said, well, you're going to have to wear it. And of course, that just that hit the button. You know, I said, I don't have to wear anything. Well, you'll have to talk to the producers then. So I said, where are they? I'll talk to them. So they got wind up when I was coming up there. So as I opened the door, one of them, I think it was Susan, said, what is it now, Robert? <laughs> because whatever occurred in the script, from week to week, if it was something that everybody knew would get under my skin, they would be, they'd be watching me to see what my reaction was going to be. So that's why she said when I opened the door, what is it now, Robert? I said, Susan, I can't wear this doggone suit. She says, why? I said, well, it looks funny. I look stupid in it. I said. This guy's been shooting off his mouth here for 13 weeks, and I have, I don't know, I think I have some responsibility to black people not to be seen as a buffoon. I forget that, et cetera. So I said, well, maybe you can forget it. I can't forget it. And so she said, well, no matter the suit is dumb looking, you can't be dressed in Savile Row. And what I wanted was just 
it was just a nice looking suit. It, they had already gotten it because at my insistence. Well, you can't be dressed in Savile Row. I said, it's not Savile Row that I'm worried about. It's Catfish Row that I'm worried about. I don't want to look like I came out of Catfish Row, Porgy and Bess. So uh, they didn't think that was funny, but I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I'll just use the word, I prevailed. From that point on, the character had a substance to him. If I had worn that suit, it had been, uh, but because I wore a different suit, it was a nice looking dark blue suit, and if I may say so myself, I looked pretty decent.